What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today it's going to be a very short video about automating some git commands. You know, we use git every day to commit and push our changes to GitHub or GitLab or Bitbucket, whichever git service you use. But in my case, I'm just going to show you how we can automate some of the commands like git add, git commit and git push. So as you can see that I'm using partial for some time right now and I'm, I'm, I won't say that I'm an expert in partial commands and stuff, but I am learning. So just to ease some of my tasks, I came up with a short script which I will be running and I will have the, my changes for my Git repositories pushed to GitHub. And one more thing is, you know, I'm going to make an alias so that I don't need to type the name of the file every time when I want to commit the changes. So I'm going to show you a very small script that will be beneficial for the GitHub or Git commands. So as you can see that we have partial open, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go to documents. I'm going to open up file which is I will be naming as git.ps1 so ps1 is extension of partial scripts so now I'm going to write a very short script okay as you can see first of all I'm going to define param so basically param is some parameters that you can add in our case we will be adding two parameters that is so up to command line arguments that we're going to pass you might have if you have developed java programs you can you have seen already in those cases so i'm going to define two parameters that is first one is the commit message and the other one is the branch name so for defining those you need to put a dollar sign at first and then you have to write commit so this is the name of the variable you can give anything you want but i'm going with the message and then i said about the branch name so these are the two parameters that we are going to use in our commands okay so now i'm going to create some lines that is at first i think what i'm going to do is staging or commit with git add git add dot then i'm going to write the git command well i'm using dot but you may use some other things maybe you can use another parameter here because we i don't know which files you want to commit and push which files you don't want to but in my case i'm just showing in general that in most of the cases that you need to like stage all the changes of all the files and then commit them and push them so that's why dot is the option for that so that's why as you can see i wrote write host staging for commit this will be a print line and then this commit this uh, a command will be executed then again i'm going to write write host and omitting the changes with git commit and i'm going to write the commit minus n and then the parameter or params comment message and finally i'm going to write pushing the changes to git repo or maybe i think i can write github with git push okay so for that i'm going to write git push or origin and then the branch name okay so basically this is my script what i'm going to do is i'm going to save this okay now what i'm going to do right now is i will be going to another directory but before that i the thing is i want to make an alias for it that means i want to make a very short term for calling this 
script from anywhere, any terminal. So at first I need to see where is the main configuration of the PowerShell. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write dollar profile. And I, as you can see that C users and then documents PowerShell, that, that is the script where I need to go. So if I go there, what I'm going to do is CD into PowerShell and then I'm going to open the file. Okay, so as you can see that I have a .config file in the user profile. I'm going to show you in a bit. And there is a folder called PowerShell and I have defined a user profile partial script which actually where I write the configurations and these are all called from this main file all right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to that so I will just type if we do an ls you can see that there is the partial directory so if I go inside that and another ls you can see that user profile at ps1 so what i'm going to do is i will go inside the user profile that ps1 and here you can see that there are some of the partial stuff when i whenever i start partial these are the commands or commands of the modules that are executed before it starts totally so what i'm going to do is i will go to this alias section and I'm going to create a new alias so that every time whatever partial starts up, this alias will work. And I'm going to name it something like hit commit push, hit cp. So in short, you can name it whatever you want. I'm just naming it in a, in a very short way, git cp. And the value will be pc b then I'm going to go to users then name this is the user profile environment variable that you've seen moments back documents it dot ps1 okay so this is the file I'm going to call every time what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to save this okay I hope I didn't make any sort of mistakes so what I'm going to do is I will close this and I will open up another PowerShell from a project. So what I'm going to do right now is I'll go inside a project and I will open up another PowerShell. So if you see, I guess we don't have any problems. So if I do an LS here and you can see there are some of the files, what I can do is I can go inside one of the files and just make a very small edit. Like if I go to the style.css file you can see there are some of the some of the things what i can do is just very simple i just go at the bottom of the page maybe and add an extra line so if i do if i save the file well nothing has changed what about script.js Let's define something, but we won't be using it anyways. So let's write const test equals then just something we wrote, but we're not going to use it anyway. So I'm going to save this file. Okay, now as you can see, the color of this master has become less yellowish than this. That means there is something to omit. What we can do is like test it out with hit status and yes we have one file which has been changed a bit so this needs to be committed what i can do right now as you have seen that i can just write git cp this is the alias that i have made then the first parameter is the commit message that is i'm going to write test commit and finally the name of the branch as you can see is master so I'm going to push it to master. If everything is fine, and everything is written correctly, this is going to push the things to master branch. Okay. Okay, so as you can see that there might be some er errors because there were some changes from some other computer actually. 
So I need to make a pool first. And let's see. Okay. Uh, readme was changed a little bit. So now what I can do is I'm going to run the command again. And let's see what happens. Okay, there you go. So this is something that I wanted to show and it has been pushed to master branch. You didn't see it properly because there were uh, there was a little bit of error and the things didn't do it at one step. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Vim script.js and this time I'm going to take off this test line and keep it back as it was. Save the file. Now you can see again that I can make some changes. So what I can do is git cp, then the commit message will be made things as they were. And I'm going to put it to the master branch. If I click, there you go. You can see now staging for commit with git add. There was it. Then Committing the changes with git commit, this is one, and pushing the changes to github with git push. There you go. We have our own script and we can we made an alias for it. And we have set the alias so every time you don't need to put a new alias command every time when you start up the computer. Whenever you open a PowerShell at the very first time when you start up the computer, it will automatically load it because of the configuration you have already made. So basically then now you can use this git cp command just the commit uh, commit message and the branch name and then you can do use it in any repository you want so uh, I've, I've shown you in one of the repositories if you want me to show you in another repository so maybe we can go somewhere else suppose we go i have a i think i have a yes i have this repository and this might be okay so this is a this is a React file, I guess. If I go do a git status. Okay, so as you can see that there is a git.ps1 file added. Actually, I was testing it out somehow. But okay, why don't we just push this change? I mean, we add this file to the repository and push it to GitHub. So what I can do right now is directly git cp then added the git script this is the master branch if I do a push there you go it's pushed so now what I can do is if I do an ls you can see a git ps1 but I actually I can remove it so I'm going to write rm git ps1 ls and there you go it's removed so I need to make this change. What I can do is I'll go with git cp again and here instead of adding the script, I'm going to write remove the script, remove the git script and push it to the master branch. So there you go. It works on any repository. So basically that's it for the video. I hope you have enjoyed it and I hope this came handy. Once again, I'm not an expert in PowerShell. I'm fairly new to it, but I am actually liking PowerShell as well as you might have already noticed that I'm using the Vim editor. So if you enjoyed it, smash the thumbs up button, comment what you thought, and of course, don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit the bell icon. So I'll see you next time and I'll see you in another video. Till then, goodbye.